Hello, my name is James Wiley. I'm an estate and succession planning lawyer at Ward Wilcox, with a particular focus on international issues. Nowadays, we're increasingly dealing with clients with international issues, whether that be children living abroad, at the holiday house, or people like myself who've moved to Australia. Unfortunately, when you're looking at international assets and issues, this complicates things from both an estate planning and a tax planning perspective. From an estate planning perspective, you need to look at where the assets are located. So if you're dealing with real estate, then from an Australian perspective, the laws of the country in which that property is situated will determine succession to that property. That country though may have issues, for example, what is known as forced heirship, which means you have to pass a certain proportion of your estate um, to your heirs in that country. If you're dealing with other assets though, for example, shares or cash, then uh, provided you um, are die domiciled in Australia, which is, means where you intend to reside permanently and indefinitely, the laws of um, Australia or the relevant state or territory you're living in will deal with succession to those assets. But some other countries, for example, European countries, don't have the same concepts. So they may have um, concepts of nationality or um, what are called habitual residence, which is different to what we have in Australia. So you can end up with a conflict um, between different countries and different assets, um, which can make your estate planning um, rather complicated. So you may end up with a result that you've got assets in one country or a citizen of another country who's tax resident in a number of countries. Uh, you may be domiciled in Australia, but then you may be habitually resident um, of a different country. So it can become very complicated. Overlaid with that is the tax planning issues. So when we're dealing with other countries, frequently we're often dealing with inheritance tax. Fortunately, Australia doesn't have inheritance tax, but other countries, for example, the UK, the US, and many European countries do have inheritance tax and the planning is very much structured around that. You also got to think about what about other taxes. So in Australia, you don't, you're not normally concerned with capital gains tax um, on death, but where you're dealing with international beneficiaries of your um, estate, then you can inadvertently trigger capital gains tax here if you're not careful with how your will um, is drafted. So how can Hall & Wilcox help? So we have broad experience in international estate and tax planning. We may recommend you having uh, wills in different countries, dealing with different assets, depending on what those assets are and the value of your estate. But it's no good just going to the um, local lawyer um, in perhaps Italy where you have your holiday home. You've really got to make sure you deal with um, specialists in that country and the documents work together because otherwise you can end up with one uh, document conflicting or um, inadvertently um, revoking the other document. You also got to think about the tax planning um, issues as well. So for example, in Australia, you have uh, what are called testamentary trusts, which are um, can be very tax um, effective and also asset protective. But in other countries, um, they don't actually recognize trusts. So the documents may need to be um, drafted differently um, in those countries, both from a tax planning and the state planning um, perspective. Thank you.